Natasha Stroud. She presented here at the, at the James Hillman conference, I think for the first time in the, uh, in the uh, alchemical psychology uh, conference. And, um, and she presented th this very extraordinary uh, paper on, uh, on alchemy, uh, on, on Chinese alchemy, Chinese alchemy. And that, that opened a lot of doors, you know, uh, doors of the psyche that, that uh, went beyond uh, 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 what could be too narrow kind of Western only understanding of the psyche. Uh, it certainly opened, opened, opened my eyes. So, uh, and her work is very much involved in Chinese, Chinese medicine. Her dissertation, her writing, her teaching in San Diego um, is, uh, is, is, is all concerned in that realm, uh, which she has developed in her own being into, into being a, a true healer. And I can tell you some really inter interesting stories about, about her healing. It's not all right to mention that yeah, uh, several, twice now, uh, uh, Natasha has uh, really, really healed Joanne Stroud. And, and from, uh, from being at the very brink of an operation to the next moment, the doctor saying, you don't need, you don't need an operation. <laughs> so that, that's uh, very remarkable. Um, She's also very much an artist, and, and it's collaborated uh, with Dr. Joanne Stroud with the, uh, a series of books on the elements and, uh, and, a book, and the, the book on time. So we are very, very pleased to have you here today. Let me take my it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. That was very nice of you. Anyway, there was a reason, <laughs> but um, the idea of the birds and the bees uh, is a cue for my speech or presentation because we use the expression the birds and the bees sometimes to talk about sex, but also <laughs> um, because of my interest in the sort of Chinese and Asian perspective, uh, you can't have the birds and the bees without the flowers and the trees. It's all a you know, unity. So it's, it's very different uh, in a way from the <clears throat> hierarchical Christian, Judeo-Christian view, which sees humans sort of more or less at the top of the food chain. And instead, you know, when you look at Chinese paintings, you frequently find that there's a big, painting of nature and mountains and you know things going on and a tiny little person that you have to sort of get out of you know looking glass to find so what i'm really talking about or, or i started talking about was um animal expressions how our in everyday language we use we bring animals into the discussion so Starting off with, uh, I guess, animal the, the derives from the Latin anima, meaning to have breath. And I have this definition of animals <clears throat> are defined as organized being, being endowed more or less with, more or less perceptibly with life, sensation, and voluntary motion. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and I loved Hillman's definition of the imagination has jaws and paws, which seems to... Anyway, these are um, uh, some of the expressions that um, seem to bring, take animal traits and bring them, ascribe them to humans, right? So we say, 
thing, you know, when we say she, he behaved like an animal, oh, I have to give you my disclaimer, I'm sorry. Um, my disclaimer is that <clears throat> um, this may not be always polite, it may not be gender neutral, and <laughs> um, <laughs> it may be, <laughs> it may not also be politically correct because a lot of these expressions that we use about animals tend to be unflattering. But that's more about, you know, the human imposition on the expression. Anyway, here I'll rattle through some and if you can bear with me, um, so to speak. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm having a few butterflies, so as soon as they settle butterflies. So when we say that somebody behaved like an animal, it sort of insults animals everywhere. <laughs> but we talk about people having animal magnetism, animal instincts, people being lemming-like, herd-like. Um, what was that one? Sheep-like. Um, we talk about somebody being a miserable worm, or what a worm, the lowest of the low. Um, he's a toad, she's a slug. You know, these are sly as a fox, foxy lady, a tiger mother, stubborn as a mule. Um, there's so many of these, and um, you know, I'm sure you've heard them all before. Slippery as an eel to fishtail. Um, the wolf is at the door. <laughs> posing a threat, a wolf in sheep's clothing, danger lurking in seemingly innocuous facade, um, to wolf my food, the big bad wolf, and then, you know, a leopard can't change its spots. We talk about horses horsing around from the horse's mouth, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Um, horses is a synonym for heroin, horsepower, hold your horses. We talk about elephants, memory like an elephant, thick skin like an elephant. What's the elephant in the room? What's a, what kind of white elephant do we have in our closet? Um, beavering away at something in the lion's den, the lion's share, quiet as a mouse, mousy hair. We say the world is my oyster. Fish, the meat without feet, as one advertisement puts it always kind of annoyed me. Fish, the meat without feet. Um, <laughs> he's a shark, describes someone who's probably a predator. To frolic like a dolphin, belly of the beast. Um, a dog, a man's best friend, wag more, bark less, as the bumper sticker says. Um, the tail wags the dog as putting the effect before the cause. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Why are you barking at me? I'm dogged with bad luck. Um, dogged as persistent and tenacious. He works like a dog. Doggerel to make halting irregular verse. Dog eat dog world. Uh, straw dogs to fight like cats and dogs. And then cats. <laughs> Curiosity killed the cat. A cat has nine lives. Somebody can be described as scared as a cat, scaredy cat. The cat's meow, cat calls, catwalk, a hot jungle cat. Someone let the cat out of the bag on little cat's feet. So uh, then I might read you this poem, the f which I'm sure you all know. The fog comes in on little cat feet. It sits looking over the harbor and city on silent haunches, then moves on. I always like that poem. That's asinine, what an ass. B. She has a bee in her bonnet, the words stung. Don't poke the bear, bear hugs. Gruff as a bear. Pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Lammy. <laughs> Can you get me this? Expecting, oh, that's scapegoat. To be the goat. Bird brain. Don't count, there are a lot of bird ones. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. A bird in the hand versus two in the bush. Birds of a feather like water off a duck's back, to have one's ducks in a row, wise as an owl, gentle as a dove, the owl and the pussycat, 
to spread one's wings, to straighten up and fly right, a fly leaf. Um, we have stag and hen parties. Impact, silly goose, golden goose, eat like a bird, to bury one's head in the sand like an ostrich, swan song. And then there's always this swanning around <laughs> to describe certain kinds of behavior. Having the grace of a gazelle, um, squirreling, to squirrel away one's supply, squirrely behavior, ferret out some information, using weasel words, ah, uh, the traffic snaked along, <laughs> so, or he beetled along. To ape someone is to imitate them. The monkey mind is always jumping around. Somebody can be described as a chippy monkey. This place is a zoo, a three-ring circus. So in so many ways, we bring these animal expressions to lend color and, you know, they've become cliched, but nevertheless, we talk about, there are all sorts of variations on the theme of bull. I can leave you to fill in the blanks, but um, I would mention that there's always the bull and bear market. <laughs> um, pig, another one that's frequently used to demean people as policemen, pigmobile, unflattering references to <clears throat> what a pig, don't eat like a pig. That's piggy of you. Hog, as in to hog the road or Harley Davidson. Uh, putting lipstick on a pig, living high on the hog, casting pearls before swine. Then there's being hunted or on the prowl. Um, there are animal motifs in politics, like the elephant Republicans and the donkey Democrats, uh, the Russian bear and the ch Chinese dragon. And then I think there's civic animals like the uh, uh, lions of Venice and the Rome has the wolf. <laughs> um, California has the bear. I'm sure there are animal motifs associated with every state. Um, they're also associated, I mean, and Hillman mentions all of this, but um, how they're used for, animals are used to sell insurance like Aflac or Gecko, Geico, whichever it is, they have a gecko to sell Geico. I don't know, maybe you can't keep the difference. An owl for trip advisor. And then we talk about cocooning. I need a, a while to cocoon after this presentation. Um, which brings me to um, the, other <laughs> the other part of the paper that I, I probably shouldn't bring up, but um, uh, just to insert a bit of Chinese philosophy, um, uh, the second most popular Taoist sage was Chuanzi, who lived during, you know, a very important summit of Chinese philosophy, and um, it seems pertinent to the discussion that you know the conversations of the last couple of days that, um, and you probably all know this, but. Uh, he recounts the story of, um, I do not know whether I was then a man dreaming I was a butterfly or whether I am now a butterfly dreaming I am a man, which is, you know, it's sort of a poetic and interesting observation and <coughs> suggests that it, it is interesting to take oneself out of um, an exclusively human perspective and try to look at things from the perspective of a butterfly or other, other animals. We talk about the reptilian part of the brain. This is sort of jumping around a bit, but partly because I wanted to mention that the Chinese, the directions in China are each covered by an animal. So there, there are basically five directions in China because they have um, the south is the phoenix, the red fire element, phoenix. Um, the east is the azure dragon. It's the wood element, and it's yang. Um, the west is the white tiger, metal element, yin, and autumn. And then the north is the black tortoise, water element, winter. Um, the tortoise is said to be reborn from the fire. 
And then there's the center, which is the yellow dragon or snake. So yellow is the color of earth and represents the center. So I always thought it was interesting that there were five directions in the Chinese paradigm. But then I discovered that in the Native American paradigm, there are seven directions. And the seven directions include the usual four, but also up, down, and within, which are kind of light, <laughs> you know, because it's important to consider one's uh, perspective within the, you know, within the universe, to consider that what is within can also encompass the entirety of the cosmos. Um, Kundalini yoga has the image of the snake, the, you know, the, the coiled snake at the base of the root chakra, the muladhara, which kundalini yogis try to arouse so that they can acquire and partake of the power that provides. So Asian martial arts try to borrow power from or use power or as feel the power of the animals. So every different school has their particular set of animals, you know, whether it's a bear for grounding or the horse for power, the crane for sharp, fast attacking movements, um, the tiger. Um, it's also interesting that, <coughs> to me anyway, <laughs> um, I hope I'm not losing you with uh, jumping around here, but the Chinese have four, four, four different four or five different schools of crane schools. One is the crying crane, one is the feeding crane, and one is the sleeping crane. Um, and it's a form of <clears throat> martial arts that's sort of designed for those who aren't strong, maybe, but you know can be fast. Um, Shaolin has five animals. Um, anyway, there. Uh, the crane represents water, the leopard, wood, speed and mobility, the snake, energy, and earth, flexibility, and the dragon, the metal element. Um, the, um, there are also, yeah, Wu, Jing, Shen, which are the five animals in Taoist thoughts. And they were thought of as intelligences, the, a type of intelligence that we frequently forget to include in our human identity. Um, there is this uh, sort of Zen story about the, uh, you know, we have this view of eat or be eaten. Um, and sort of man in the West, man has to dominate, be top of the food chain. And <clears throat> there's the story of the Zen master who, on the other hand, um, enters the cave of the tiger and both go to sleep. It's kind of a nice, <laughs> don't try this at home. <laughs> um, I was also going to mention that it's, it is interesting that the Chinese include, as you know, um, 12 animals, uh, rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, sheep, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig as their animals of the zodiac. And those animals were chosen because when the Buddha was enlightened, he invited all the animals to come celebrate with him. And those were the 12 that showed up. However, why is the, Hillman pondered this, why is the rat first? And Hillman's idea was because it scurries from behind. But one of the stories was that the rat hitched a ride on the ox, but then at the last moment kind of jumped ahead. So whatever that's worth. It's interesting that Hillman himself was a young tiger, fire tiger. So every, every one of the 12 signs has, the 12 animal signs, five elements, and it's either yin or yang. So he was a young tiger, fire tiger. And it creates a cycle of 60 years. And um, I think he was also born in April, is that right? Which, April 12th. So he would be a dragon, that's a dragon month. So he had a lot of <laughs> fire element. And um, I just, 
think that uh, uh, it's, it's, it's always interesting to see the different ways in which animals pervade sort of the everyday. Um, the, I was going to read this uh, thing from Shakespeare, which was, when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger, stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard-flavored rage, and lend to the eye a terrible aspect. And I think that's what, you know, the, that's some of what the martial arts attempt to emulate the, the aspect of animals. But, you know, it is also worth noting that, uh, you know, well, we are, we are animals. <laughs> We're the only animals that get obese, as far as I know. I mean, unless they're over, really overfed by some human. Um, then I wanted, oh, also the most, my favorite poem, I'm an animal, is a most famous poem from Japan, probably you all know it, but it's very brief. Pond, frog, plop. Also, the no a huge number of uh, other animal motifs in cars, and I seem to have lost my list. I had a list of the car names, Jaguar, Cobra, Mustang, Impala, Volkswagen, Bronco, Panther. Team names, I don't know the team names. So uh, <laughs> I've, I've lost the rest of my notes. Rats, I give up, I'm a bug.